that's classic. We bring you great laughs and a unique behind-the-scenes look at classic television shows and movies. I'm John Cato. I'm an actor, voiceover artist, and also bring you an amazing insight as a moderator with over 20 years' experience in the television Today industry. Today on That's Classic, uh, we have a phenomenal guest, somebody I've wanted to have on the show for a long time, um, Marion Ross, who is the, of course, fantastic film career. Everyone knows her as Mrs. C from uh, Happy Days and uh, just a wonderful woman. So, um, Marion, we're thrilled you're here, um, and I'm co-hosting with Bob Bergen, voiceover extraordinaire. So welcome, Marion. All right. Hello. And Bob Bergen. Hello, darling. Yes. Hi, my dear. How are you? <laughs> Good. So Marion, um, got a million questions, but uh, I, I per, and Bob and I kind of jump off and, you know, back and forth, but yeah. I wanted to know, um, I had heard that you at like age 13 already knew, hey, I want to be a star. You even changed your name because you wanted the marquee to, to say it different. I, I did because my my name is was spelled M A R I A N R O S S. I said this no. I said no. This doesn't look right. This is not going to be good. So M A R I O N R O S S. Marion Ross is perfect. Okay. And you're work. thirteen. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, that that's amazing. What, you know, um, another thing I was curious about is when you started out, um, I had heard, you know, you were down in San Diego and I've heard multiple, th <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely we will show your book for sure. But um, I wanted to know when you were in uh, La Jolla, I think it was La Jolla or San Diego, did, what's the story? Did a director from Summer Theater say, hey, Marion, you'd be good in movies or was it a professor that connected you with Paramount. I, I was curious, what's the true story? Oh, I, I don't think th that uh, La Jolla had much to do with connecting me to Paramount. So that, I, it, I had an, an agent and he, Jack Wiener, Mr. Hmm. Wiener, Mr. Wiener, took me to uh, Paramount. And uh, in those days, I tell you, the studio was so tough. It was running so tight. And there were a lot of very famous people around. So it was thrilling to be there. Mary, oh, it had to be so, so thrilling. Were, were you a contract player when you got Happy Days? I was. I, I was under contract. Now, whether, whether I was under contract when I did Happy Days, I don't know. I don't know. But at first, I started under contract. Wow. Did you, did you, did you, like, did you like the contract player days? Did you like that, that system? Uh, so I'm trying to re really live through uh, how I felt about all that. Um, <clears throat> in those days, I was so out of it. I was so, and I didn't even know how to drive a car. Wow. Isn't that something? So my husband would have to drive me to Paramount Studios. And it was thrilling because there was all kinds of famous people around uh, the whole, whole studio. Did you, you know, I looked, uh, I looked at your filmography or whatever during that time. You weren't in just these like casual B movies. These were big movies. I mean, you were in Sabrina. I mean, that's, that's, that's uh, Humphrey I, oh, Bogart. Oh, I, I was in Sabrina. Right. And I was in Lust for Life. Oh, my, I, yeah. With uh, Vincent Minnelli, Kirk Douglas. I, absolutely. On. Wonderful scene with Kirk Douglas. And uh, it was just uh, wonderful. I did a lot of great movies. Yeah. What was Kirk? What do you remember? What Kirk was like? Uh, he he was strange. He was strange and and uh, friendly, friendly. You know, easy to contact, but um, uh, and and had so much personality, so much and red hair and so forth. You know how he was. Uh, it was a very exciting time for me. Wow. I was I was curious. I one of the ones that I saw was uh, some came running, which yes, was uh, yes, Sinatra yes. and Dean Martin. Do you recall like what that was like to be around these guys? I do, I do, and and because here's Dean Martin in bed. He's in bed, and, oh. and, and we're at the in this hospital, you know, and 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 he's very difficult to to, to work with. And, wow. And, and oh. God, it was, it was thrilling. In what ways? In what ways would you say it was difficult to work with? Because he he takes it so seriously, you know. 
and and, and so the, it, it wasn't it wasn't they weren't just playing with it they were they were it was serious and this was lust for life this is the story this is kirk douglas of the story of going to europe right i tell you it's wonderful wow what the other one i uh, i noticed that i thought was interesting for some came running shirley mclean you worked with her but then i i noticed that all these years later in the evening star you work with her again i know and and uh, it was so interesting because you would think we would become grand friends, but she was difficult. She was a very mm. difficult girl, Shirley McLean. Yeah. And well, I, since we touched upon Evening Star, we're going to be bouncing all over the place. Um, I, I love that movie and I love your performance. You got a Golden Globe nomination for that. But your, your, your take on Rosie was so different from the first movie, but very, very um, similar in the book, but you made the character your own. Was it difficult stepping into a character that was kind of esoteric in the first film? I isn't it so you're so darling. I because I I remember so little about the the journey, you know. But it was Vincenti Minelli was the director, and that made such a difference because he. You know, he was like a little quivering animal as he watched watched you. So you, I, I wanted to please him in any way that I could. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You had one. You had one of the most wonderful lines in the Evening Star, where you know you're you're laying on your deathbed and 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 children plans like Rosie, what's wrong? You're like, I'm dying. It's pissing me off. I mean, it was just such a delicious, wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. wonderful. I'm up in bed and I'm dying. Here's Shirley MacLaine is, is by the side of my bed. She wants to know a lot of other things. I said, no, I'm dying here. I'm lying here dying. You know? <laughs> well, I, I want you to know that half of my family's from Houston and you nailed that accent. You just a hundred, and I'm a voice guy, so I know voices. And so is your son. He knows voices. Yes. You nailed that, that voice. <laughs> great, great. Well, I had a good ear for, for, for accents. I always had one from the time I was very young. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, by the way, in that scene where Shirley MacLaine carries you, was she really carrying you? Well, she had, she had to support me really well, really okay. well. So it really looked like it. And of course, when at that point, Rosie was dying, so she wasn't quite as heavy as she had been. So, but I... It's wonderful because uh, uh, Shirley MacLaine meant an awful lot to me. Yeah. She would say, you want to go shopping today? I'd say, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we would go, we would go to some, some kind of outlet place where they were selling everything. And I would think, oh my God, what are we doing in here? You know? And, and she would, we would have to, I would have to wait and wait and wait while she looked at everything and ask questions about everything she she was she was difficult wow did she, did, she, did, she, did she happen to uh talk about your past lives or anything metaphysical <clears throat> oh i don't i don't think so no mostly she talks about herself you know about, oh <laughs> about herself, you know, so, very. <laughs> that's funny uh, god um, i had uh the other thing i was really curious about everyone we've had on the show which by the way We've had uh, Anson Williams. We've had Henry Winkler on the show. Um, so, you know, you were, like I said, it was a natural to have you on. And by the way, I, Henry, when we had talked with him, had said that you two are very close. We are. We are very, very, very good friends, right? Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Was it yes. always that way? Uh, it, on, uh, on Happy Days, it was. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I we got were you. Very close, yeah. Were, were you, I mean... I know that you were the mother on the show, but were you kind of like the mom to a lot of a lot of the cast members in general? I, I probably wasn't as close to Ron at all because Ron is very independent, sticks to himself, you know, works alone. But uh, but but Henry meant a great deal to me, and he was he was new in the town and new to Paramount, so it was it was thrilling to be with him. Wow. 
Yeah. Can you, well, he can, spoke can, very highly of you too, by the way. Oh my God. And, and yeah. by the way, I, I, I've said this to Henry so many times. I'm like, nobody can be this nice. You are the <laughs> nicest person, not just in Hollywood, but just in the world. He is such a sweetheart. I am. I am a compulsive nice person. Right. And there you I'm go. Not, I'm not a bad person at all. Hey, Marion, I wanted to, I just wanted to ask you about the genesis of, of Happy Days, because I know it started on Love American Style. And when you do Love American Style, you don't know what's going to happen with that little segment that you didn't know was going to become, you know, a, a 10 year run on ABC. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the process and your and the pilot that you did with Harold Gould? Oh, gosh, Harold Gould, talk about a wonderful actor. Wonderful, wonderful. I love being with, with Harold Gould. Yeah. Uh, isn't it so funny? It's, I, it's hard for me to dredge up. I'm 92, 92 and a half. You so, look incredible. You look so, amazing. So it's amazing that I don't remember. It's hard for me to like great dig up all this stuff that I want to talk about. That's fine. I think it's yeah. amazing that you're at, you're 92. Come on. Isn't it? Isn't it extraordinary? Isn't it? It and is. You, it is. You can see I have high color. You know that's my, <laughs> that's my Scottish uh, ancestry. There you go. Wow. Hey, yeah. hey Marion, I, I I was talking to John about this before we started. Uh, when I was a starving actor. I worked at Magic Mountain with your brother Alex. Yes. And your and your nephew and you and I'm sorry, with your with your brother Gordon. Gordon. It, my <laughs> brother Gordon and my nephew yeah. Alex. Yeah. Yeah. And and they were terrific. And I I spent a, a summer working with both of them up at Magic Mountain. Oh my God. Yeah. It was good. Wonderful. I had a, a wonderful brother and very talented and big hearted. A lot of a lot of talent and and his and his son was such a mm, needy mm, sad, sad sort of story there you know what yes yeah. agree and, and but a sweetheart well heart of gold alex had and gordon so i wear a prosthesis and gordon and i bonded over jokes of what we had done because because gordon played a prospector up at magic right. mountain and gordon had a wooden leg because yes, he did he us he right did. below his knee when yep. he was a, like an early teenager, they said, they said we're, we're, I'm sorry, we were going to the hospital. We, we were taking the leg off. It's oh, just wow. Not, it's just not shaping up. <gasps> oh, my God. So well, that well, was very important. He was, he was a sweetheart, and we just bonded. We used to sit around and just tell prosthesis jokes and fake foot jokes, and he was the one. <laughs> He was the one that said, to, I said to him, I have to go, I go, I used to go to Dallas to get, I still do to get my prosthetics made. And I said to him, I have to got to go to Dallas to get a new foot. And he goes, oh, if they cost an arm and a leg. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, is that, is, is that what you got? You got a new foot? Was that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And do yeah. you have a calf? Uh, yes. So, uh, but not much, not uh -huh. much. I'm, I'm missing about 95% of my calf. Okay. In fact, when I was born, um, the doctors told my parents, amputate from the knee down, he'll never walk. Oh. And, and right. And so my Jeez. mom said, my mom said, why don't we wait to see if he does for, before we jump to conclusions? Well, you know, if you go like this to a kid with a cookie, they're gonna come running for it. Yeah. So my mom like this with a cookie, and I came running for it, and I've been eating cookies ever since. <laughs> I know. Good for you, and good for your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a strong mom. Hey, Marian, um, I talking about I'm so intrigued by by uh, you know your your journey to happy days. Now, what I what I have read is that you were in airport, the movie airport, and that uh, Sandra Gould had had you over, who was you had worked with through that, and that there was a casting director there at that dinner that said, you know, you'd be great for for this role. Is that true? That is true. That is all true. Right. Because I, I love it. We were on that airplane forever, ever. <laughs> and we, we all became so close. And, and I, would, I wanted and I went to Sandra's house. And Sandra was just an extraordinary, smart, clever woman. My God, she really was. So it was, it was wonderful to go. And, and she had... Uh, the casting woman. I think What's it was Gussie or Millie Gussie or something like that. I can't I remember think her name. So. And, yeah. And it just, 
we we all wouldn't pretend that we knew each other so well, you know. <laughs> Did do you remember uh, that audition of going in for Happy Days? Isn't it? Isn't that interesting? Uh, I, isn't that something? Yeah. Okay. It seems yeah. What? Like a long time ago, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I think I was under contract to Paramount, so yeah. so it was e easy and uh, right. Just to be in the airplane, and right across was Sandra Gould, was across the aisle, and uh, it just was so interesting. Well, wow. I, I, this, this, this is nothing really happens by a rule book in this business. I mean, it just mm -hmm. you never know how you're going to get a job, and you don't know when you're doing something that it's going to become a hit because as an actor, we just want to eat. We just want to make a living doing what we love. And, you know, you lived through what many of us call the golden age of TV, the, the, the days of, of Gary Marshall. Can you talk right. a little bit about working with Gary? Oh, God, Gary Marshall, he was a, such a prince of fellow. And, and first of all, he was so smart. He, he put us all in a, in a, in a softball game. You know, so therefore we made we made friends together this way in the softball game. He we he would we would play all over the United States, and then we played in Europe. To, so we could play with the armed forces families over there and play softball. I'm, I'm and so I was a good batter. I could Were bat. You? I was good. Yes, good. I was, not, I was not good at fielding because I couldn't throw in. I couldn't throw it all the way from the outfield, you know, back in. But right. I was very, very good. Bit, you know, and and I have a very nice bat. I have my bat, which usually I have my bat right next to me, you know. And wow. we played ball all over the the United States. You know that. That's amazing. That is amazing. But, you know, I know that it, it might be, I mean, you shot so many episodes, I can imagine, you know, remember well, 200, them. we had 200 and something. Uh, yeah. Happens, yeah. I mean, come on. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Right. Over 10 years. I, okay. Another one I read is that you did the one called the dance contest. It was with Henry where you're dancing with him. And that was one of your favorites. Do you recall that? I do. And indeed, because Henry was a very, very good dancer. And so they got us, they hired a special coach to come and to work with Henry and me so that we could be, we could be in this wonderful dance contest. Oh, and, wow. And, yeah. And, and Marion, I have a question. Um, did you and the cast find it as weird as the audience and the fans that they just pretended like Chuck never existed? again <laughs> chuck I, I love it no we would we would break out and laugh no matter what it was about chuck because oh my god no he I, he would always get everything kind of wrong get it all uh -huh. mixed, mixed up and and we but, we, but, 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 but when the when the character just disappeared and there was no reference of him ever again no do you guys think that's the audience is gonna find that weird Oh, no, we're just so, we're just so realistic. You know, we're just okay. so, we're so natural. We don't care. You know, it's just, show. it's just a show, you know. That is Oh, funny. see, but, but, but to the fans and the people that watch it every day, it's more than a show. It's a relationship. I mean, people have relationships with their favorite TV shows and their favorite characters. I, I know. I love it. Isn't that sweet? I think it's fantastic. When, when you were, <laughs> before you got Happy Days, I understand it was kind of a tough time. That it, you had you had the two kids and you were kind of, you know, trying to keep it going or whatever. Um, was that just? I mean, do you remember? Was that just a huge shift in your life? I think it was a gradual, gradual shift. You know what happens? First of all, Happy Days comes along. You don't know it's going to be this enormous hit. You didn't know that this fellow, the Fonz, was going to come staggering in and take that away from Ron Howard. And now all of a sudden, it's all about the Fonz. And so there's you had that going on. And then when we added the softball thing to it, that gave us something to do. That was a, a wonderful way to put us together. And that was Gary Marshall's idea. By putting us together on a softball team, we, we, we made a real thing out of it.
That's interesting. When when you think back, by the way, to uh, to your to the early films, um, one of the ones that I had noticed and is well, two. One was Operation Petticoat with Cary Grant, and another one was Teacher's Pet with Clark Gable. Do you do you recall seeing them? Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, for, for, for Clark Gable and teach, you know, we here's Doris Day, Clark Gable, right. and we're at Paramount. And uh, so it, it was un unbelievably thrilling for me. I do, you know, that unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. I can't imagine what that would have been like for, well, let alone for any actress, let alone for any woman to, right. to be there with Clark Gable. Uh, I said, I, would, I said, what? what what shall I call you? What shall I call you? Uh, Clark, I, I don't know what to call <laughs> He said, you may not get to call me anything. <laughs> you know? Wow. But he, but he treated me with great respect. You know? Wow. And what about, do you, any recollection of Cary Grant through Operation Petticoat? Uh, Cary Grant was another close. He was a good friend and, and nice oh. to me. And and oh, cool. we went we went to Florida and we and we were on this catching marlin or fish off off the coast of of florida wow and, and it, it was just wonderful we had wonderful parties you know wow. mostly it was like we were partying you know oh How what an we... incredible time you had jeez i know hey right. marion marion hold up your book hold up your book and show everybody your book definitely all right, children, can you see that? Darling? Yes, ma'am, a little higher. No, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Isn't that nice? No. Yes, I love it. It's a so, gorgeous photo. It is a good photo. And there's pictures inside. And anyway, it's it's so fun. Oh, here's me in the, in the water with my father and my brother. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I was um, a very, very good swimmer in Minnesota. Oh my God! Have you gone well, back to Minnesota, by the way, over the years? I would, I would go back uh, after I after I'd been to Paramount, and it was thrilling to go back there, and I'd walk across that lake that would be frozen in the winter, for absolutely frozen, and it would boom under your feet. Wow, thrilling! And I, when I would go to the movies. In the movies, the movies meant so much to me. At though at that point, we would go to the movies and just and just live it and live it, you know. Oh yeah, I heard it must be an honor for you. They they named the Performing Arts Center in your hometown, oh, the Marion Ross Performing Arts Center. Oh, I know. I want you to come. I wish you would come. Can you fly out to Minneapolis, rent a car, drive down? It'll take about you know a couple hours to drive down. <laughs> And, and uh, it's a wonderful little town, Albert Lee, named for a, a, a Confederate officer of some kind. Interesting. Know. Yeah. And it's all built around a lake. So my childhood was spent uh, living, living at the lake, living in the water, running, um, running the bathhouse, selling frozen ice cube ice cream bars and Cokes and things, renting out bathing suits. It was, life was just wonderful. It was the lake. Swim out to that lake. Here's a big dock out here. And it's supported by big gasoline uh, cylinders. And it's way out there. Swim under, under there and then go underneath, you know, all among the, the, the cylinders that were holding everything up. And we could all talk under there. And it was a wonderful, mysterious. Wow, and, uh, wow. Dive, dive off the... The, the heights of the things, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Swim all the way in. My, you, I, had, I, had long, I had long braids and those braids never got dry the whole summer. My, my hair never dried out. You just squeeze them out, squeeze them out. Wow, it was great. And I was very strong, very Do you, do strong. you think the time that you spent, do you think that time you spent in the Midwest had an effect on like, you know, I mean, as we've said, the, the uh, business, the entertainment business is hard. Do you think like that time you spent in the Midwest kind of, you know, instilled that, you know, drive to keep going? Oh, yes, absolutely. And the fact that my mother was a Canadian and she was an immigrant from Canada 
and she, she, I was raised to know that you can be anything. You can do it. You can do it. Were you not raised like that? Did your parents talk to you that way? I was. I, I'm, I'm from the Me Midwest. Too. And, and okay. I, think, I think both of us are very blessed to have had close family relationships. I think, you know, no matter what your uh, vocation is, you're going to be more successful or your odds of success are better if you have a good foundation with your family. Oh, absolutely. And, and somebody that's always cheering you on, mm -hmm. thinking you're, you're wonderful. You're going to be fabulous. Right. Yeah. Hey, I have I one. Would, we, would, my, we had a big dining room table and it seemed like people would gather around this dining room table and tell stories. And then somebody would say, look at Mary because I'm listening to the stories and tears are, tears are running down my face because I get so involved in, in all the stories. So uh, then I re realized that I, uh, that I would get their attention because I was so emotional, you know, so emotional, you know. And this was the war, this was World War II that was going on. So we had all of that, yeah. Hey, Marion, before, before we run out of time, I want to ask you quickly about just, again, one of my all-time favorite uh, TV shows, projects that you did, and that was Brooklyn Bridge. It was so good. Oh, did I love Brooklyn Bridge? Yeah, you must. Well, I did. I love Brooklyn Bridge, but I know you must have. I did. I loved it. Yeah. And, and for me to play, first of all, Jewish. I'm playing Jewish. I know. Right. And we lived, really well. lived up in the, up on the uh, Brooklyn, up in, uh, in the apartments up there, up in there. I, I, I just, I, I, it was just a wonderful time for me. So it's hard for me to even t begin to tell you how wonderful it was. And we had such good actors, you know, mm -hmm. Gary Gold, Gary Goldberg created the show, put it together. And because he was from New York and everywhere, there were, we, we got really good actors all the time. So you did. You did. And again, your accent was spot on. I'm also a Jew and I've got family in New York. I got family <laughs> in Houston. And trust me when I tell you, you nailed it. And by the way, uh, along the lines of the accents and the voices, what so was Jim always doing voices as a kid? Yes, he was. Pretty, yeah. Pretty much because yeah. that was the it was a fun thing around a table, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. But By the way, when you did when you were doing Brooklyn Bridge, uh, one of my annual jobs was uh, interviewing celebrities at the Hollywood Christmas Parade, and I've got a picture of me interviewing you in a car going by. I'll send I'll send it to you. I'll send it to Jim. Oh, I, I would like that so much. Thank you. Yeah. I might have been at that one. By you the way, you were totally. I remember, at remember her going remember by. Remember what a good time we had in the parade. <laughs> I do right? remember that. Right. That's funny. I I was sitting in the in the open car with Marjorie mm -hmm. Maine. You know the actress. Oh, come on, Marjorie Maine. Oh, Marjorie yeah. Maine so was Ma famous. Kettle. Was Ma, right. Ma and Pa Kettle. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. Oh yeah. And so, so we would go go down down the boulevard. Oh, yeah. You know? Wow. Hey, let me let me ask you. This is this is something that I'm curious. Tom Bosley, um, I have read that, hey, when things first started, it was a little, uh, your relationship was a little odd, let's say, um, off camera. But that, w was that true? It was because Tom had come from Broadway. Even though we were the same age and we were raised in the Midwest, he's from Chicago area, uh, he had gone straight from the Midwest to Broadway and wow. did, I, I'm trying to think of the wonderful show he did where he got so famous. Oh, know? he played a mayor. He, I, I forget, I forget what, what the show was, but I know you're talking about. But, and he was so re well respected. He mm -hmm. was so well respected. Mm -hmm. and sure. He was, and he was hard to get along with. And he really was mildly fond of me, mildly fond. Mm -hmm. so it was, oh, it was okay. You're being kind. Yes. yes, right. So uh, it, it was a life. But you know what's interesting? Despite that, you guys had such great chemistry on camera. Like incredible. Yes, and that's um, something. 
Um, I, well, I first of all, I was very impressed with him because he'd been to Broadway. He'd been had become a big star playing Fiorello on Broadway. that was it. Oh, there you go. Out. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, so a lot of talent and an awful smart and hardworking. So uh, it's like we we really lived a life together. You know that. Oh yeah, definitely. Did it, by the way, your character, it's so funny as we're talking about Tom Bosley, I can hear him in my head saying, Marion. <laughs> and what was that just a fluke or or how did that happen that the name of the character was basically your name? <laughs> Obviously nobody cared. Absolutely they didn't care one bit. Well, well, we'll just call her Marion. Okay, is that okay? Huh? Okay. So it's really funny. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I always thought that was such an odd, you know, that that would that would go like that. Did yeah. you um, once once the show started, what did everybody kind of connect right away? I mean, I realize you and Tom not, but the rest of the cast, did everyone connect pretty tight right away? Or was this like it took a few years? No, it, it right away because we've got Donnie Most and we've got Anson Williams and we've got a softball team. And so by playing ball together, things like that, we 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 stuck together a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that uh, Ron Howard is, is wonderfully poised. You know that he's got wonderful control. He got awfully close to Henry. And yet at the same time, uh, you always knew that Ron was in charge of everything and Henry mm -hmm. was was this great actor but needy but needy henry was needy i thought well yeah well like you said it was this was his big break too absolutely when yeah. Mar marion when 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 the show ended were you all ready to end or would you have kept going i think when the show ended we were we'd already had 10 years of it mm -hmm. 10 years mm -hmm. of it no we'd had enough of it yeah okay. and the show was growing older. Everything was, everybody was getting older. So it was- And they kept, and they kept bringing in new, new actors, new characters yeah. to try to keep it youthful. I know. So it was time to move, time to go. Hey, I've got a, I got a question for you. I, 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 things come into my head as we do this, but you were like, I looked back. I mean, Miriam, you were on so many television shows be, way before Happy Days that it was stunning. I mean, I saw- uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen show. I saw the Lone Ranger. Oh. Uh, I mean, Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, oh I was, lo I love being on the Lone Ranger. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do, was saw, it, who was that masked man? <laughs> <laughs> was, that was Clayton Moore, by the way, right at that time? Yes. Well, he was absolutely perfect, even though <laughs> absolutely not real, you know, it was, but, but it was wonderful. Uh, it was fantastic. Those wow. guys would all play poker, you know, uh, backstage, you know, off to the side, all the cowboys, all the cowboys. Oh, uh, wow. But I took it very seriously. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Lone yeah. And, um, what about what about George Burns and Gracie Allen? Any any recollection of, of that? I, I was thrilled to be on that show. And we like we did it live. I mean, I don't know. We rehearsed and, and did it. And oh, that's right. It was live. then. And he was sort of difficult in, in a way in that he was so wide open. She was she was just more fun to be with. But he he was very specific and was great. It was thrilling. I mean, this was George Burns and Gracie Allen. Legends. It was, it was yeah. thrilling. Yeah. yeah. Any any recollect not the 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 I I saw the Barbara Stanwyck show, which by the way, I'll be honest, I didn't even know she had her own show. Yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, wow. Any recollection of her of that time with her? No, but other than the, of being thrilled, Barbara yeah. Stanwyck was thrilling, you know. And she That's, was so so groomed and so perfect and so you know. Yeah, so, well, she, Mar yeah, Marianne, oh. Marianne, as a fan of movies, you must have pinched yourself with every job with all of these wonderful, wonderful artists. Yes, I, I, I did. I, because I, once you become a, a fan of movie stars, and I always bought movie magazines, and I had them up in my bath, bedroom wall down. I, my bedroom was down in the basement down by the washing machine, you know, right. and, and, and all we had, here's Tyrone Power, here's, here's uh, uh, anybody, all they were all, it was wonderful, 
the movie magazines meant so much to us. And now to, to go to Hollywood on the train, the war is over, and then go to Paramount Studios and go into the Edith head in the, in the makeup mm -hmm. and, and the wardrobe. And the, it was thrilling to be there, I tell you. It's, uh, and, and when wow. you did, when you started doing Happy Days, um, there were that, that, that lot has always been busy, but that was such a busy lot. So much TV, so many films, mm -hmm. so much going on at one time on one studio lot. Yes, absolutely. And now it's it looks like, like an old museum in a way. It's quiet. And but the going into lunch there was, yeah. was thrilling, you know. Oh, the commissary? Wow. Oh, in the commissary. My God. Can you believe it? Yeah. Thrilling. I, mean, I, mean. I love that you were able to take that in like that. You know, some people, it's funny, you know, Bob, Bob and I have been in the business a while, not as long as you by 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 any stretch. But we've been in it a while. And, um, you know, some, some actors come to town and they're like, hey, we're all actors. It really doesn't matter. And that's great. But you still have to still be that person, like you said, that was in your basement that goes, I love these people. And now you're next to them. Yes, it's thrilling. I, I never could get ever used to it at all. And, you, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's a pretty thrilling industry. You don't get used to it. And you don't get used to the actors. And it's like Clark Gable was so good to me, was so nice to me. So was er, er, uh, uh, Errol Flynn? I can't think of, no, I can't think of anybody right Well, you moment. had you had Bogey, Cary Grant, you had Jimmy Stewart, Tony Jimmy Curtis. Stewart, yes, Tony Curtis. I tell you, Tony Curtis was wonderful to me. We all, we all did have- uh, 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 Operation Petticoat? Yes, we did Operation Petticoat, right. And he was just a wonderful guy. Wonderful guy, fun to be around. He had a good time all the time. Mm, how neat, how neat. Yeah, you know wow. what the thing is, you, don't, you never take it for granted. You never take just the, uh, how fortunate, you know, we're all able to make a living at doing what we do. I, every time I drive on the lot at Warner Brothers or Disney or Paramount, I still get the same giddy uh, excitement as I did the <laughs> first time because I'm like, I get to do this. I get to be here. And it sounds like you never lost that, that excitement. No, no, no. And you would, you would come up and here's this big gate, the big Paramount gate and wardrobe is right there. Big, big wardrobe building right by the gate there. And it was, it was always thrilling. A little funny old man in a little uniform waving you on, you know, and it's just, it's, it's, it's so long. Now that I'm 92 plus, so it's no wonder I can't remember it very well, but it's just how thrilling and just stunning it was to be there. Stunning yeah. to go with, at any time at lunch. God knows who you were going to see in there. Really? Wow. 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 And, and, and even Happy Days, from what I recall, there were quite a few guest stars that came on there, too. I mean, we've we talked about of... Tom Hanks being on the show. And... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tom Hanks, exactly. And then we got him to play ball with us. No, he's a very good athlete. So it was just, uh, did you know he was a good I didn't know. No, I didn't know Tom Hanks had played on the softball team. That's oh, yes, funny. Yes, right. Yeah. Oh, we're just... It's, it's been a very thrilling life for me. You know, that. it has. Hey, I've got a I've got one I'm curious about. Okay. I, I look at your past. You go to San Diego State and I read, is this true? You studied archaeology? No. Okay. I saw that in an article. I'm like, why would you have down? <laughs> I swear to God, that maybe, is maybe it was articles. architecture. Who knows? Who maybe? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, you got, you were awarded like the best actress or something like that. I'm like, um, when would you find time no, for that? No, I, I wasn't a very good student other than all I, I was in all the plays. It was wonderful. And I was a character actress. I had a great range of roles that I got to play. Uh, thrilling and because of the globe theater with craig noel at the globe theater mm -hmm. uh 
that was the other place. And there were a lot of other small theaters, maybe 10 good little theaters all over San Diego. Mm -hmm. So you could be in a play in La Jolla or, or in Coronado, in La Mesa. There was always things going on. Did your parents move to San Diego to further your career? Or was that just a, no, was that the case? It was during, during the war, during the mm -hmm. war that, that uh, my father got a, a job working for the Navy at, at the Navy base. And so we just jumped, we sold everything we had, jumped on the train and lived in naval housing you know, not, not, not grand, but this was, ah, for me, it was wonderful. And I went to the meetings. They had uh, theater arts meetings, the Globe Theater in the park, in Balboa Park, in a funny little old bungalow, you know, wow. and you could go to those meetings and uh, I, I, oh, look at those people. I never saw actors like that. And, you know, cause I'm like, a senior now in high school. Yeah, and you've come from this little town in Minnesota. Right. With, or maybe, wow. I don't know. That's amazing. What an opportunity. Talk but, about meant to I, be. But I had, but you see, I had a Canadian mother. And my mother, being Irish and being Canadian and being an immigrant, she could, she said, you can be anything. I said, I will, mother. I will. I will. Wow. Wow. Did you, uh, I, and yeah, I'll let you go here in a second. I don't want to, I want to keep you too long, but I am curious. I'm from Milwaukee originally. And obviously the yeah. show has that. Have you gone back there uh, or during the time of happy days? Have they had you back at any time? No, we, we had, we did go to, to Milwaukee quite a bit, you know, and uh, um, because I didn't have a big emotional tie with Milwaukee, Sure, but th that's, that's where we all supposedly came from, you know? Right, right, right. I know that they put up the Fonzie statue there as well Absolutely. for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All okay. right. I've enjoyed wow. talking to you, Mike. Marianne, you're the best. Thank you so the much. The best. Okay. Yeah. All Thank right. Thank you so I, much. I, we'll, we'll have a big meeting in Albert Lee, Minnesota. Okay. All of us. <laughs> I well, like no, that. You're, you're, we're going okay. to, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, I love we're, it. I'm going to see you in Woodland Hills. I'll have a glass of red wine for you. All right. Okay. All right. Get All right. Bye, Marianne. Bye-bye, darlings. Hey, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video so that you don't miss any of our future YouTube podcasts. Also, follow us on iTunes and Spotify and leave us a review.